Now we have sound. Now we have sound. Can you hear me now? <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to Lemonsbury United Methodist Church. Today is May 10th, 2020. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter and it's Mother's Day. Woo. My phone is also having sound. joining us for the first time, you've already found out that this is a worship service and not a performance and full of many imperfections that we offer to God, and that it's okay. You are truly a part of our worshiping community this morning. You may or may not be Methodist, you may or may not be familiar with our liturgy or with the symbols that we use in worship, you may or may not live close by or ever intend to join us in person in the future. That is totally you are welcome to comment on the live stream as much or as little as you want. And I invite you, if you feel comfortable, to especially share your prayer concerns in the comments when we get to that part of the service. Your prayer concerns are our prayer concerns, and they are welcome here just as much as you are. I also want to take a moment to give a shout out to my mom, who watches this service every week from her home in Franklin, Tennessee. Happy Mother's Day. I love you very much. Before our service begins, Mr. Bob has a special announcement for all of the children. Good morning. I have a wonderful surprise for all the children out there and also for the children in their hearts. Thanks to the efforts of Pastor Michelle, Miss Marcia, Miss Denise, and Miss Felicia, a packet will be mailed to you consisting of activities, crafts, and a brief sermon and questions. On Sunday, we will look at the packet together, and I will give a brief talk with questions afterwards. In the comments section, you can respond to the questions and or write what you have worked on in the packet, and I will read all the comments next Sunday. If you didn't receive a packet, there will be a way to get in touch with the church to get one. God bless you. So kids, when you get your packet in the mail this week, don't open it. Keep it somewhere safe until next Sunday. And then when the children's conversation comes on in next week's worship service, we will all open our packets together and there will be some activities for you to do based on the Bible lesson. Parents, if you want to make sure that your child is on our mailing list, you can contact the church office. We are happy to put any kid who wants to be on that list on it. Our service begins with a call to worship. I'll be the leader, you'll be the people. Please join me. Once you were not a people. But now we are God's people. Once you had not received mercy. But now we have received mercy. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Let us proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us. God's own. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into the marvelous thing that God is building. Like living stones, may the great builder form us into something marvelous, holy and good. Amen. Let us worship this great God as we join in singing. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but 
put holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all He is Lord Lord of all When He shall come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in Him be found Dressed in His righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord, Lord of all He is Lord Lord of all Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong In the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all Our scripture lesson. Let us open our hearts and our minds to hear what God has to say to us today. Read from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. <laughs> they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
You will. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. I wonder how these words felt to the early Christians, just a house church huddled together in somebody's living room. The air in the home was thick with the aroma of a meal just shared and the sweat of all those bodies closely gathered around the table. Children darted in and out of the maze of people, but every time a knock came at the door, the vague feeling of freedom was immediately stifled, and the people held their breath in fear. This early church had no pastor, no building, no Bibles, no bulletins. Outside of themselves, they really had no social network either. That's what happens when you convert to an outcast religion only to the disapproval of the people and the culture around you. That night, somebody opened Peter's letter, and they read these words. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. I doubt that the church was feeling very chosen or royal or holy in that moment. They probably just felt like a ragamuffin band of misfits, a motley crew of hopers and seekers holding on to a strand of faith they were pretty sure that they believed in because it was all that they had left. In the section of the letter that we're looking at this morning, Peter begins talking to the early church about building a great spiritual house with Christ as the cornerstone. In verses 4 and 5, he writes this. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe for a handful of dreamers in the room, this vision of building a great spiritual house sounded exciting and inspiring. But I can just see the rest of them crossing their arms and rolling their eyes and thinking, get real, Peter. We barely have the resources to pull together a shabby dinner. We certainly don't have the resources to make ourselves into this grand vision that you have for us. Like these first century Christians, we too find ourselves in a house church moment in history. It's just that instead of being huddled together in a single home, we're spread out in a hundred separate homes, isolated and quarantined. Like the early church, we hear Peter's words about building a house of living stones with Christ as the cornerstone and living into our identity as God's chosen people. And I can imagine that many of us think, well, that's nice, preacher lady, but I'm just over here trying to figure out how to pay my bills and not catch the coronavirus and not go insane. When you look around the church right now, what do you see? An empty building, a defunct lineup of ministries, a collection of dysfunctional people. We know that the church is called to feed the hungry. 
But every time we open our food pantry, we wonder if we're going to run out of food. We know that the church is called to welcome in the strangers, but that's a lot more complicated than it sounds, and someone needs to call the insurance company, and who wants to volunteer for that job? We know that the church is called to worship God in spirit and in truth, but the organ needs tuning, and the candles are out of oil, and it's really hard to focus on God when all these people are making so much noise in the sanctuary. We know that the church is called to be a priesthood, to have direct access to the holy of holies, and yet we're too busy to go there. We know that Peter calls the church a great spiritual house, but our spiritual house is not so great All we have is a worn-out roof and 20 years of carpet stains and more recovery groups and scout groups and community groups that need our space than we have hours in the week. Not that it matters when the building is closed. We don't have what it takes to build a great spiritual house, literally or figuratively. We don't have the money. We don't have the skills. We don't have the energy. We don't have the gifts. We don't have the time. So thanks for the pep talk, Peter, but we just don't have what it takes to build the kind of church that you're talking about. Of course, if we think we are short on resources, we've got nothing on the early church. But the good news for the early church was that God wasn't asking them to build a spiritual house, physical or otherwise. Instead, God was asking them to be built into a spiritual house. The difference is subtle, but it changes everything. God wasn't asking them to become builders. God was asking them to trust in the builder. The only resources that they needed were themselves. Their dysfunctional, poor, persecuted, uncertain selves, holy and dearly loved. Verse 5 again says, Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. And then verse 6 says this, For it stands in Scripture, For it stands in Scripture. See, I, not you, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. The good news is that we don't have to become the builders. God is the builder. The good news is that our job is not to build the church. Our job is to let ourselves be built into the church. Don't get so overwhelmed with the big words and the lofty visions in this scripture passage that you miss the good news. God is the builder of the church, not us. And when we trust in following in the way of Jesus, God uses who we already are, imperfect as we are, to accomplish God's plans. And when we embrace that reality, we find that where before we only saw scarcity, there's actually a profound abundance. Who are we to be living stones for God to build into Christ's holy church? Well, who was David to kill a giant with a slingshot and a tiny little rock? Who was Jacob to dare to place a stone to mark the spot where God showed him in a dream a ladder connecting heaven and earth? Who was Moses to dare to believe and proclaim to God's people that the living God had carved into stone these holy and precious Ten Commandments? 
who was Daniel, to believe that God would shut the mouths of the lions so that when the stone was rolled away again the next morning, he would still be alive. Who was the so-called adulterous woman that Jesus himself would step into the line of fire and say to her accusers, let he who is without sin cast the first stone? Who was Peter for Jesus to say to him on this rock, I will build my church? Who were Adam and Eve to be formed out of the dust of the ground, life and breath out of decomposition? Who was Mary to believe that when the stone was rolled away, it was God who did the rolling? Beloved, we are like living stones. And if we will allow it, God will build us, and God is building us into the church that God would have us to be. Amen. If you want to respond to God's word by affirming your part in God's household this morning, I invite you to join in professing the Christian faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> At this time, I invite you to continue responding to God's word through an offering. If you choose to give a financial offering this morning, your gift will help support United Methodist ministry actively happening on the ground all around the world this morning. This includes emergency response efforts like those to the coronavirus pandemic, and it also includes ongoing efforts like building schools and hospitals around our country and our world, and providing clothing and housing and nutritious food to those who are in need. This year, our church has committed to tithing 12% of its budget to support the transformative ministry of Christ around the world. There's multiple ways that you can give an offering this morning. You can give online at www.lemonsterumc.org give, or by texting the word give to 978-496-3126. Or you can also give the old-fashioned way by placing your offering in an envelope and delivering it either by mail or by hand to the church mailbox later this week. As Marsha plays Living Streams, come, let us offer our gifts with joy and with thanksgiving.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, I invite you to share in the comments anything that you want to pray for today. There were a number of prayer concerns that were shared last week that I missed, and so I, I'm sorry about that, and I want you to know that my intent is to catch them all this week. If you're not on Facebook, you can share your concerns by contacting the church office during the week. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Let us begin with a time of giving thanks in our hearts for the gift of the women in our lives. As this slideshow plays, I invite you to tell God, thank you for whoever those women are to you. Holy God, we lift up to you, Shirley, Cheryl's mom, and Kristen's grandma. We pray that you would be with her as she is experiencing heart failure. She had surgery on Wednesday with complications and is now in the ICU, and God, we ask that you would be with her. We pray for Angela, who is home from the hospital but is still recovering from COVID. We thank you, God, that Alan Warner is doing much better and recovering from COVID. And we pray for Ashley Tyus's mother, who now has COVID. 
We ask that you would continue to be with Cheryl as she recovers from her shoulder surgery and that you would continue to be with Nancy as she recovers from her fall. God, we give you thanks that she's out of her sling and we ask that you would continue to heal her as her doctor thinks that she may have damaged a nerve near her spine. God, we ask that you would be with Doug and Liz Lurie as they deal with the fact that Liz has now tested positive for COVID. We pray for Connie and Jose Del Rio, that God would bless them as they move this week and that God would be with them as they move into a new chapter of their lives. We give you praise that Cindy's eye is much better. We pray for Linda Boyd in Lemonster Hospital with COVID. God, we continue to pray for Douglas Kruker. And God, we pray for Ever Young. Ever is the five-year-old cousin of Denise, and she has complications from chemo treating her leukemia. We pray for Lauren's husband, Jeffrey, and all first responders. We pray for all the mothers to enjoy this special day and see how much they are loved and how awesome they are. Uh, God, we give you thanks for me <laughs> and my leadership during this crisis. We pray for all the people going into greater risk as communities lift stay-at-home orders. Another prayer for Liz. And continued prayers for Nick Cordero and everyone else who is suffering in the hospital from COVID. I think I got everything. If I didn't, God knows. God, we lift up to you these prayer concerns. The ones that I have spoken and the ones that remain unspoken, the ones that we hold in our hearts quietly, the ones that we don't have words to articulate. We ask that you would receive them. That you would hold all of the things that we cannot hold in our lives, God. And that you would transform and redeem our lives and our world. We pray all of these things in the name of of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Immediately following our benediction, there's going to be a stewardship update that's intended for our local church members. If you aren't a church member, it's nothing secret. You're welcome to watch with us, but the message is really intended for those who are an ongoing part of our local church family. And now may you offer your very self to God, and may God build you into something marvelous, something holy, and something good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you depart, I invite you to pass the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Steve Mockler, and as many of you know, I'm the 2020 Stewardship Lead for the Church's Finance Committee. Um, and as we stated earlier in this year, our goal is to give an update every month on where things stood with the financial health of the church. Definitely some crazy times that we're all dealing with here. 
And I personally really miss worshiping in person and I look forward to the day when we can worship together again. The last update we gave was in early March and throughout the month of March, our weekly income was very close to what we needed uh, to fully fund the ministry um, throughout the, the month of March. Even though the month of March was good, we fell short on paying uh, fully the United Methodist Mission shares due to lower giving levels in January and February. The mission shares, for those of you who do not, do not know, uh, is our part of supporting the um, global Methodist Church, both through ministries throughout the United States as well as around the world. Definitely some crazy times with this whole COVID-19 thing. I was thinking this morning what the disciples must have felt like in the boat during the storm. Christ was with them, and Christ is with, us during this is with us during this storm, and all who believe and trust in him. He's our anchor. He's the one with us in this storm. He calms the raging seas around us. Times like these can greatly increase our faith in Christ if we only hold on to him and trust him during this storm. I want to say a big thanks to Michelle and to many others who quickly transition how the church function, functions from an in-person worship experience to an online time. I also want to say a big thanks to Chuck Weaver. Chuck is managing our, our income and our expenses remotely. He quickly transitioned from an office function uh, at the church to being able to remotely run our church finances um, through his home. So thank you both to Michelle and to Chuck and all those who have helped us quickly transition to online. As I said in March, we had planned to sing along in early April, but that was canceled. Um, that sing along, all, all, all benefits or, or all proceeds would have gone to support the church's finance committee. Um, the in-person worship service for Easter was canceled, obviously, which obviously has a big impact on any church's finances. <clears throat> the food pantry, both at the end of March and April, had very large turnouts. Um, as many in our community need the support of the food pantry. And that wouldn't be possible without your giving, without the volunteers, and frankly, without our church facility in order to house the food pantry. And for the last six or seven weeks now, we've been doing online worship, as everybody knows. A huge thanks to Scott Newcomb and Rob Gabriel. Through their tireless efforts, we are able to worship every Sunday with a high quality worship service, which wouldn't have been possible without their uh, technical savvy and, and wherewithal to help us enjoy uh, an online worship experience. It appears we're getting roughly 60 to 70 people uh, logging in on Facebook uh, every week through our online worship service. And just to put that in perspective, normally our, our typical attendance with both services is in the neighborhood of about 120 people every week. So all in all, not too bad. No other church groups are using the facility. No outside groups are using the facility. The Finance Committee has been very focused on cash flows, um, closely monitoring our income, managing the expenses that need to be paid and when. Uh, we've cut all expenses that we could or lowered expenses to the, our, the best of our ability. <clears throat> our budget, as I've said earlier, is approximately $270,000 a year. Um, out of that, $32,500 is, is for mission shares. The reality of it is, during this COVID-19 time, our income is pretty good uh, as we continue to very carefully monitor uh, how we pay our expenses and, and manage our income. I want to take just a second to talk about the importance of mission shares. <clears throat> it's a big part of our budget, and it supports the Methodist Church, both in the local area throughout New England, as well as around the world. It also has a negative impact on the local pastor if a church or its congregation cannot fully fund its mission share responsibility. We have a great leader in Michelle, and through your support, we'll be able to fully fund our mission shares this year. Through mid-April, we're roughly $2,000 behind in being able to fully pay all of our expenses, including our mission shares. But considering the times of, that we've gone through in April, that's not too bad. I would say that we're in pretty good shape. And through your continued support 
and maybe some increased support through your prayerful giving will be able to make up that difference. More importantly, as we roll into warmer weather, and everybody is anxious to get outside because we've been all staying inside for way too long. We all want to get out, enjoy the warm weather. Please continue your support of the church during the summer months. The summer months for many churches, including ours, is always a very trying time in trying to balance the expenses that are coming in, often with a very a traumatic, dramatic uh, reduction in, in giving. So through our online giving, that has been going very well. I just ask for your prayerful support to help us continue that throughout the summer months as well, as we all want to get outside and enjoy the sunshine. I think we often think as a society that online stuff is free and we don't need to pay to support it. If you think about how many times you would pay to, to watch a YouTube video or how often would you pay to do a Google search, the reality of it is we wouldn't. Our online worship isn't free. It serves a vital need both in our local community and in the Christian church around the world, and your support is needed. There's many ways to give. You can drop mail um, in your, your giving. You can drop it off the church box, uh, or you can also donate online. We have a great church community. We have a great pastor and leadership team. We have a great youth group and youth leadership, and we do many good things in the local community. As I said in March, are we going to be difference makers or space takers in a global society that needs the good news of the Christian ministry? Let's hold on to that anchor in Christ and make a difference to, in the world. And we can only make that difference through your support and your continued support throughout the warming and hopefully outside summer months coming up. May God bless everyone. Amen.